in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and lead us not into temptation but, deliver us from evil. but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and, the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever. forever. Praise, the Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The King of Kings, the King of Kings and, Lord of Lords. and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgments with, with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no, ma no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground, he hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is, is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Selah. I've read from you Psalms 143 verses 1 through 6. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'd like to get a choir another round of applause for a couple of great songs. And also, I'd like to say praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone here in the name of Jesus. Also, peace to those that are watching on live on the internet, and peace to those that are listening on the phone line. Um, today's title is The Wilderness, The Place of Safety During Tribulation. And it's kind of convenient that the second song that the choir just sang about Israel going home, guess what? We're going to deal with which road we're going to take to get home. It's going to be from the wilderness. You know, but with all the, the wicked and, 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 and things that are going on, horrible things that are going on in the world today, I mean, the world is headed into a time that it has never seen. And the Bible calls it great tribulation. You know, I mean, we, 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 we think we there now. Every time you turn on the news, it's just something terrible going on somewhere in the world. But nonetheless, the Lord told us what this is leading up to. It's leading up to three and a half year tribulation. And thank God that there is an escape route. And that is through the wilderness. You know, some, you know, a lot, a lot of the talk in the town is the Lord got to come and sneak the saints off the earth, which is written nowhere in the Bible. They call it a rapture. That's not written or proven nowhere. But what it is proven is that the same way the Lord brought Israel out of captivity and took them into the promised land is the same way we're going to escape this, this, this great tribulation that, that, that's coming, coming to pass. Well, we're going to open up in Luke 24, and well, we're going to take a look at it. Luke, 20, Luke 21, I'm sorry. Luke 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. When you get there, brother, go ahead. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distressed of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay, so there's going to be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and the stars, and upon the earth distressed of nations, and perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And here's Jesus making his second coming. But it don't say every day men is glad to see him at this time. It say men are with fear. You know, their hearts fell in them for fear. Because, again, this, this is something that the earth is not expecting. Why? Because man as a whole has us looking the other direction. You know, Jesus said he's making his second coming this way. Everybody else is looking this way. Mm -hmm. So when he finally come, they looking the other way. And he, it, it's just like he's sneaking up on them. They, they, what's, what's going on? But go ahead, verse uh, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass... Then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. He said when these things begin to come to pass, he didn't say they might come to pass. He said when they come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, and your redemption draweth near. Your redeemer is, is, is coming. Verse 29. And he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. Mm -hmm. When they now shoot forth, Ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Okay, so he gave us a little parable about a fig tree. When you see them start to bloom, a fig tree, you know that summer is almost near. Mm -hmm. That's a sure sign. That's why he's using a, 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 a sure sign to, to, to let us know about this other sign, which is what? Verse 31. So likewise ye, when ye see th these things come to pass... Know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. He said, hey, just like a fig tree when it blossoms, you know summer is at hand. Sure sign that these signs, you know, we just read a, 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 a small portion of the signs of his second coming. 
But when you see these signs come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. That it's very near. You know, it's very near. You know, just like we can say all the destruction that you see going on in the earth. It, it's, it's becoming near. He warned us of all these things. A lot of people are surprised and just think, we're going to close our eyes, go to, go to sleep tonight, and wake up tomorrow, and it's all going to be over. That's not so. It's going to keep getting worse. But 30, uh, 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. He said this, this generation. He's talking about this generation right now. It's not going to... This generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. Go ahead. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass he away. Said, hey, heaven and earth will pass away before his words pass away. If he said it has to happen, he's not going to go back on his word. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Go ahead. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. He said, hey, don't, 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 uh, he said, take heed to yourselves. Don't be distracted and this day come upon you unaware. You know, that you just sleeping on it. Go ahead. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell in the face of the whole earth. He said, just like a trap. Nobody's looking. It's going to be so simple. Again, everybody looking one way, Jesus coming the other way. You waiting around <laughs> to sneak off for, for the Lord, you're going to be caught up right in in the middle of great tribulation. <coughs> and waiting and wondering, when is the Lord going to come? When are we going to sneak out? When are you going to disappear? When I'm going to disappear? Mm -hmm. You know, th that's not going to happen. It's not written that way. It sounds good, but the Lord ain't never had to sneak up on anything to show his works. There you go. He ain't never had to sneak. He's going to come straight forward. Look, you dead now. I ain't going to do just what he said he's going to do. Verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He said, watch ye therefore and pray always. Always watch, always pray, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. That shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So again, he said, yeah, just pray and watch and wait that you will, you are will found worthy to, to escape this. It is an escape route. Everybody's not going to escape it, but some of the ones that do, hey, pray that you will find worthy to get there to the place of safety. Uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Matthew 24 and verse number 3. Go ahead. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, so I, I you know, I've read this, this, this verse a whole lot of times and a whole lot of times more. I continue to want to, to, to see the answer of these questions that, that they're asking Jesus. Out of his own mouth, that he's going to answer them, what are the signs of his second coming and of the end of the world? And there's no rapture nowhere in here. People might pull out one verse and say, well, see, he's going to get caught up. Well, you got to keep reading it. Caught up to do what? <coughs> he ain't say he's coming to sneak you nowhere. And definitely didn't tell you that he's taking you where he's at right now. You can't read that nowhere. But they ask him privately, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? First, first answer Jesus gave him is what? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive he said, you. Hey, make sure you don't get deceived by no man because they, they minds are, are wicked as, as they come. They're going to come up with all kind of stuff in the name of Jesus. He's warning them. Don't be deceived. You better watch man. You better watch your next door neighbor. You better look at them, because they're going to deceive. And that's the world that we live in, deception. You know, while all these events are going on in the world, people running around doing just all kind of folly. You know, just all kind of folly. You know, they just had some folly. Was it this week? You know, putting ashes on their forehead. It might have been last week. It was one of these weeks. I lose track. 
Might have been this past Wednesday or last Wednesday. But just, just all kind of stuff. We know what it's leading up to. It, it, it's not in the Bible. Take heed that no man deceive you. Why is that? Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. He said, many, many. Many could be 99.9%, .9%, brothers and sisters. It's going to be a noticeable number of people deceiving the, the world in the name of Christ. You won't have to look hard for this. You know, you don't have to go look at no small church like this, like, like our, our small congregation. This is going to be wide across the world. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You're going to hear wars, rumors of wars. We've been hearing about wars and rumors of wars for some, for some time. And every time a big war jump up, you always got somebody, hey, this is it. Hmm. You know, we went over to Iraq, oh, this is it. No, this ain't it. He said, it's got to happen, though. You know, we got rumors of wars right now. You know, our country looking at North Korea, looking at Iran, looking around to see what everybody else is doing. You know, with their hand on the trigger. Rumors. But he said, hey, the end is not yet. He said, these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. This is just, you know, this is not the icing on the cake just yet. We're going to have some wars. But skip down and pick it up at verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. See, he that endure. You got to endure these things. You know, you can, you can finish reading, you know, Matthew 24 on your own because there's it's all kind of signs that has to happen. That's why he's saying, he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. He said that even this gospel, this is a sign of the time. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. You know, and here we sit doing our part. You know, this, 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 this gospel got to get spread out throughout the world. Because when the Lord makes his second coming, it's not going to take, I, don't, I didn't know. I never heard about it. Mm. I didn't have access to it. He's making sure that ge this generation right here has 100% access to his word. He promised it. Hey, he's not going to come and just sneak up on you. The information is here. You don't have to look, for, you don't have to look hard for it at all. All you got to do is read and believe. Quit listening to all the garbage. But go ahead and finish that. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, now here's the ultimate sign. That again, the, most, the average person don't even never heard of an abomination of desolation. What's that? Really never heard of an abomination at all. Why? Because, hey, they've been told they can throw the Old Testament in the garbage. Mm -hmm. Abomination, what's that? That's nailed to the crown like something, nailed to the cross. But here's Jesus coming out of his own mouth. Warning you about something. When ye, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. He even told you to go where, where to look. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Again, this is one of my favorite verses that points exactly back to the Old Testament. So you can get some understanding. Because mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to go over the whole nine yards right here in this conversation. He said, hey, y'all y'all already been told what to do. Just go back to Daniel and read it. But again, guess what? If you threw away your Old Testament, you don't have Daniel. You lost. You need to go back and pick Daniel up and, and the rest of the Old Testament and put it back in your Bible and read it all and get a full understanding. Well, you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. And once you get this understanding and see this guy standing in the holy place, what do he want you to do? Then let them which be in, in Judea flee into the mountains. He said, hey, if you around Jerusalem somewhere, you better get out quick. Flee. Run. That means run. I don't mean just walk your way on out casually. Mm. He said, hey, flee. You better hurry up and get, get up out of there. That's right. You know, without, without, without delay. 
They'll let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Get up out of there. It's time to move. This abomination of desolation is here. You don't want to be around. And again, we, if, if we find worthy, we definitely want to escape the three and a half years of tribulation because that's going to be something that you're not going to want to see. You know, that, that's, that's definitely something you're not going to want to be there for. But skip, skip down and pick it up in verse 21. But then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. He say, after all these things come to pass, the abomination, the desolation, do his thing for three and a half years. Then he said, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. Matter of fact, this is talking about the three and a half year tribulation. Mm -hmm. You know, the world is, you, again, we think we're seeing something now. You know, people just getting shot down in the street right now by police or by each other. It, it don't matter right now. You're living in the Wild West again. Just walk out and draw. You know, you think that's something, <laughs> you still ain't seen nothing. You know, you go and look at the, 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 the worst scenario movie you done seen in, 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 in media or movies of destruction, you still haven't seen nothing. I was saying, hey, you, you, man, imagination haven't brought them to the point where this, this is going to be at, at this time. For there shall be great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world, till this time, no, nor ever shall be. Everything that we consider civil right now won't be civil at this time. Why? Because this abomination of desolation is going to tell you to take a mark in your forehead or in your right hand, and if you don't, all chaos. Mm -hmm. They're going to grab you, kill you, lock you up, grab your child, cut their head off of you, and they're going to try to do everything they can to make you take this mark. But you have to want to take it. They just can't give it to you. So, again, it's going to be some tribulation. I think they had a movie out before with Samuel Jackson called Unthinkable. That, that, that's the time this is going to be. The unthinkable things that you think man will not do to take that mark, that's what they're going to be upon or locking you up, or killing you, or beheading you, or what have you. It's going to be a slaughter of the saints. But go ahead, verse 22. The Lord got to do something about that, though. Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened. He said, except those days should be shortened, what is man going to do? There, there shall be no flesh saved. He said, if the Lord don't come intervene, <laughs> man is going to destroy total destruction, 100%. They're going to push the buttons. They're going to do whatever they have to do to show that they got the power. But the Lord got to come in and vain. Thank God for that. He said, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for what? But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. But for the elect's sake. But for Israel. The promise the Lord made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that those days shall be shortened. Because he got to spare, you know, the tribes of Israel. He got to spare somebody from those tribes. That's what he promised. But let's go back and take a look at Daniel. A little bit. And we're going to see, take, just take a little bit to see what signs we need to look out for to lead up to this tribulation that we need to be found worthy to escape. Daniel 7. We're going to pick it up at verse number 1. Daniel 7, and pick it up at verse 1 when you get there, brother. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Mm -hmm. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Okay, so we now know that Daniel was a dreamer of dreams. You know, in this first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his, his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Now he's going to break this particular dream down. He spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And what came out of them? Verse 3. 
and four great beasts came up from the sea, mm-hmm. diverse one from another. Okay, and he's going to tell us about these four great beasts that came up from the sea. What the sea here is representing people. These four great beasts came up out of the people different from one another, or diverse from one another. Verse uh, 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Okay, so we're going to cut straight to the chase. We know that this is, he, he's describing the, 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 Gentile, the Gentile dynasty. Starting off with the Babylonian Empire as he likened unto a lion. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. So the first one was the Babylonian Empire. Verse 5. And behold another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Okay, and this second, this second Gentile uh, 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 rulership was likened unto a bear, which was the Medo-Persians empire, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, and they said, Thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Verse 6. And this I beheld, and lo, another, like a, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Okay, this third beast, which is referring to the Grecians, you know, it, 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 it was likened unto a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. So these first three, they all had ruled the whole world as far in their in they, in they own time. But they all was leading up to what this last beast still is trying to pull back together even to this day. Verse 7. After this I saw in the, vision, in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Okay, this fourth beast. Now the other three beasts was, was, was likened unto something vicious in the kingdom of God. A bear, a lion, a leopard, you know, three, just, just three of many beast in the, in the kingdom that you wouldn't want to play around with. But this last beast, this fourth beast, how did he describe him? Dreadful and terrible. He just said this, this one is dreadful and terrible. So obviously this one is unlike any other beast that the Lord could compare it to. You know, it was, it was much stronger and terrible than a lion, a leopard, a bear, and anything else that you could think of in the kingdom. Because there, there's a lot of vicious animals in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, but he named a few of them and this last one, it was just dreadful and terrible. It was just, huh. it wasn't no joke. He said, and I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and what? And strong, exceedingly. Very strong. Go ahead. And it had great iron teeth. Mm-hmm. It devoured and breaking pieces. Yeah, great iron teeth. I mean, it could chew up anything. You know, it, it, it can just chew through anything. Probably similar to something like a hyena's teeth that can just chew chew up any any type of matter, you know, anything, bone, whatever, you know. So he he's letting you know this 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 definitely is no joke. Go ahead. It devoured and break in pieces mm-hmm. and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay, so it stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. It was very different from all the rest of the beasts. You know. But go ahead. Let, let, let's uh, go into verse 8. Is that me? No, I'm good. <laughs> I considered the horns, and beheld, there came up among them another little horn, mm-hmm. before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Mm-hmm. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Okay, so we got, we got another lesson that breaks down this very thoroughly about the horns and, and everything about these beasts. But today we just want to really look at this little horn that come out of these ten horns. Because that's the one that, like you said here, and this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. So this is definitely a man that come up out of these horns. Mm-hmm. 
But skip down and pick it up at verse 21. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, 25, you're right. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Okay, so he shall speak great words. This little horn is going to come out. You know, I cut straight to the chase. It's going to be a religious leader. You know, that he, he's going to be the one that is out of his seat is where this abomination of desolation is coming from. That, that Jesus warned you about, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Mm -hmm. He said, he shall speak great words against the Most High. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High and to think to change times and laws. And this guy that had a long time to get himself set up. It's not like he's just going to poof and appear overnight. And, 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 and everybody just going to accept him. No, this guy been a religious, his office been a religious office for centuries. And he's been doing his will, and we're going to see in a few where he get his power and all that from. But he's going to speak great words against the Most High. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, you, we can come up, open up the book, show somebody what the Most High have said, and this man and got, got the people saying, no, we ain't going to do that. We don't care what the Most High said, basically what you're saying. He's going he's gonna to speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, which is one year, and times two years, and a dividing of time, which is three and a half years. Go ahead and uh, verse 26. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it until the end. Mm, so his, 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 his kingdom is, is ultimately going to be destroyed in the end. He's not going to last. But when the Lord come again, this guy don't stand a chance. But again, his job through Satan is to deceive the whole world. And that's what's going on right now through religion. You know, that's how this, this last beast have been surviving. Verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Okay, so the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So the Lord is going to come and take care of this guy at the time appointed. He's not going to stand a chance. Right now, hey, he's making moves. He's just waiting on the right time to when he can make his ultimate move. Like, like, like Jesus told us in Matthew 24 when he go and stand in the holy place. Meaning when they, when they finally build this temple over in Jerusalem that, that they've been working on and, and contemplating for some years, that he's going to get up out of Rome and he's going to say, hey, I got to make it look more, you know, Bible, biblical-like. I'm going to go live in Jerusalem. I'm going to go live in this temple. That's the time when we need to be on our way to a place of safety. Mm -hmm. That's when he's going to say, hey, this, this is my time. You know, again, he's running this kingdom right now, but ultimately he, he hasn't went and stood in the holy place. Again, they're still working on it. It's still being set up. But um, go ahead. Where do we leave off at? That was in 27. Go to Daniel 8, and we're going to pick it up <coughs> in verse 9. Daniel 8 and verse number 9. Go ahead. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. Mm -hmm. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. This little horn is no joke. He said, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed the ceiling great, toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land, and it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the hosts of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. So he's going to wear out some saints, like we just read in Daniel 7. You know, we, 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 you know those of us that are saints, we go up against them, we, we, we don't stand a chance. 
physically, spiritually, the world is going to believe whatever come out of this guy's mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, one politician might be paying for some words that he said about this guy. In just a few minutes, just keep watching the news. <laughs> He's saying something against Papa. He gonna, might have to pay for it and chew them words. Because that's just how great this guy he is right now. But go ahead, verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. He's going to go over there and just take over. You know, they're going to they gonna build a temple in Jerusalem. They're going to start the daily sacrifice already. Again, all this stuff has been being set up for quite some time over there. But he's going to go over there, and by him the daily sacrifice is going to be taken away again. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down, verse 12. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. He said, and a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And what did it do with the truth? He cast, cast it, it to, to the, the ground. ground. I mean, he's going to step all on the truth. Man, we don't need that. He's going to listen and do what I say. You know, because he feel that he took over. Jesus died, the apostles died, now, now he think he's the one. He's the one that, that's been setting the boundaries of the world right now. Giving, giving a, you know, giving a lot of the, the, the false truths that we've been listening to now. This guy's the one. Said he, he cast it down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. Skip down to verse 21. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Mm -hmm. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not by his power. Mm -hmm. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents and of darks and of understanding dark sentences shall stand up. They gonna stand up and do what? And his power shall be mighty but not by his own power. See, he's he going to have some mighty power, but he, he, he's, uh, it's not by his own power. And he's going to do what else? And he shall destroy wonderfully. He's going to destroy wonderfully. And? And he shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. It's going to be ugly for the holy people. Again, hope to escape this time. Because those of us that are... I, I left behind, whether it be by accident or on purpose, because the Lord knows somebody got to stay behind to finish continuing his will and, and, and teach people, because people are going to be still needing to be taught. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be ugly if you don't make it to the wilderness. But, again, we got a job to do if we, if we don't make it. But he's not going to make it pretty for you. It's going to be an ugly picture. But go ahead. And through his policy also he shall cause Christ to prosper, in his hand, and she, he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Gonna by peace, going to destroy many. Wonderfully. He's going to be destroying it in, in, in the name of peace. He's going to be thinking it's peaceful, getting the blade right across your head. You know, this guy's going he's going to destroy some saints. Through his policy also he shall craft, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Go ahead. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hands. He's also going to try to stand up against the, the, the Holy One. But guess what? He's going to be broke without hands. That, that's an amazing God. He ain't going to even touch him. He's going to break him down. But this guy is a real human being. I know you got some myths. Some people think that, that, this, that this is what they call Antichrist, going to be some machine or some computer. This is all talking about a man. Mm -hmm. You know, computers and machines are smart, but they can't do this. They can only do what man allowed them to do. And they definitely don't come to life. But this guy is going to be something else. Let's go over to, uh, let's hold our finger right here in Daniel, and we're going to go run a revelation real quick. Because John, he, he had a similar dream on the same, the same subject. And between the two of them, we should get full understanding. Because, again, we need to know what we need to be aware of and what we need to be looking for. And definitely know what to look for when it's time to escape. Revelation 
13 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead. And I saw upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as, were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Okay, so the beast, the, this beast that John saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion. So he saw this beast all as one, one, one entity. But it's still the same beast because you still got the same beast of the, of, the, of the field, the leopard, the bear, and the beast which I saw, the leopard, and his feet was like a bear, and his mouth was like a lion. So you still have the same three that, that started it off. And the dragon, which is Satan, gave him his power mm -hmm. and his seat, and great authority. So he didn't definitely sold his soul to the devil. Yes. You know. So he is the ultimate worker of Satan. But he's deceiving in the name of peace. He's deceiving in the name of Christ. The very thing that Jesus warned you about. I told you beware of this. Okay. I got to start over now. We got, got phones ringing. Let's start it <laughs> back in Luke. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and pick it up in verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his daily wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Okay, so he's talking about the, the, this fourth beast, you know, and he said, I saw one of the heads as it was wounded to death, and his daily wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, which he's talking about Rome. Because Rome was, was finally defeated or, or lost their militant power. That's why I said it was wounded, but he was able to be revived because he came back as a religious order. You know, militantly, they're they not that strong right now. At least, if you know, we was doing the whole lesson. We we're going to the, 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 the East and Western Europe thing, which we're not dealing with today. What they're trying to revive is this, 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 this Treaty of Rome right now. You know, they've been trying to get that together. And it's got to come to pass. You know, but go ahead. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. They yeah, worship the dragon that's giving power to this beast. They just don't know the dragon is behind it. Because they got the dragon looking like he's Christ. You know. The Satan can't deceive the whole world in the name of Satan. He got to mm -hmm. come in somebody else's name to deceive the whole world. Mm -hmm. and who other name than to come in besides his arch enemy, Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's going to deceive everybody, because that's who everybody yearning after. But you're getting the false Jesus. You're getting that wrong Jesus. So you're wandering after the beast, and you just don't know it. They worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And how did they worship this beast? Go ahead. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who was likened to the beast? Who was able to make war with him? He's saying, man, this guy's so powerful, can't nobody take him down. Who's going to stop him? They're going to see. They're going to see. The time is getting near, but go ahead. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. It was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, which is three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. He said he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So people might, you know, most of us know who we're talking about, you know, a religious leader in Rome. And, and well, you know, well, he don't blaspheme Jesus' name. Well, everything that Jesus said, he go against it. Jesus told you what to eat. Oh, you don't have to do that. You can eat anything. Pray over it. You know, keep the Sabbath day. Oh, you know, we change it to Sunday. Jesus didn't know what he was talking about. God didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So that's blasphemy. You know, when God says something, you got somebody else saying the opposite. That's, that's what blasphemy is all. That's a, that's a part of blasphemy. But go ahead. And it was given in, unto him to make war with the saints mm -hmm. and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Well, he's got power over everybody. There's not a, a, a part of the world that you can't find his little symbol, which is a cross. 
You see that everywhere. Mm-hmm. You go down the deepest jungle, you're going to see one of those. Around December 25th, guess what? You're going to see a tree in the deepest, darkest jungle with some decorations on it. Mm-hmm. This guy's got power over everywhere. Everybody. You know? So it says it's given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. I mean, they got it sealed up. They got it sold up. Well, let's go right back to Daniel. We're going to go to Daniel the 11th chapter this time. Actually, we could have held our finger right in Revelation, but we're going, we'll be back there shortly. Daniel 11. We got a couple verses here. Go ahead and uh, start at verse 31. 11 and 31. Go ahead. And arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. And, and they shall place the abomination that maketh death. He's going to stop the daily sacrifice again, once again. We just read that. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. They're going to place him in, 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 in the holy temple. Skip down and pick it up at verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. See, he gone, he gone, he said the king shall do according to his will. I mean, all the kings, the presidents, everybody is gonna do the will of this guy. You know, they follow his order. You know, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above who? Every God. Mm-hmm. He's gonna say, I'm the ultimate one. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. You know, he's gonna speak so great, he's gonna. Make you think that God didn't have a clue what he was doing. You know, like God is just so belittled and he could do so much more. And a whole lot of people are going to be deceived, especially when he started doing his wizardry and doing magic and deception. People are going to fall for that. You think they won't? They already are standing out on the expressway looking at an image that this guy told them was holy. Mm-hmm. 65 miles an hour, people out there trying to see. That's crazy. I don't care if it was something. I wouldn't be out there on the highway. For what? Just to see something. But this is how this guy got the mindset of the world. He shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that, that is determined, shall be done. Verse 37. Neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers. Neither he going he gonna to regard the gods of his fathers. And this next one is going to just tell on itself. What is it? Nor the desire of women. See, he's not going to regard the God of his fathers or he don't want no woman. Who is this? Mm. You only got one leader in the world that don't want a woman. <laughs> Even the kings of the earth got women on their side. But this guy said, I don't need all that. I'm above that. God gave you gave, gave man that. He don't even want that. Mm-hmm. Nor the desire of women, nor what? Nor regard any God, mm-hmm. for he shall magnify himself above all. He's going to magnify himself above all. He said, I'm going to be the ultimate one. I'm the ultimate warrior. I don't need nobody, nothing. I'm just God. And the world is buying that. Why? Because the world, for lack of knowledge, that we don't want to read. Nobody wants to read no more. You know, it, it, it's not uncommon to walk up on somebody that have never read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Never. Trust me, some years ago, I was one of them. Never read it. I thought I knew a little something, but I, obviously, I didn't, I didn't know nothing. Nothing at all. Well, let's move on. Let's go over to uh, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse number one. Second, second Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. Go ahead when you get there. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, mm-hmm. that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that... The day of Christ is at hand. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come 
except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, Paul is telling these, warning these Thessalonians about it. Same guy. He said, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. He said, don't believe nobody coming up giving you no foolery. Talking about Jesus can come tomorrow mm -hmm. or he can come next week or anything like that. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. He said, it's not going to happen. Except they'll come a falling away first. Meaning people are just going to have zero, almost zero truth in them about God. You know, it's got to be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He's got to be revealed first before you can say anything about Jesus coming. All these things got to happen. Not one day before. But he said, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who's going to do what? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, I mean, this stuff that we're talking about today and reading about sounds terrible. Sounds horrible. So if somebody stand up here and tell you, smooth something over and all oh, the Lord going to come sneak you off. You'll probably buy that after reading just a little bit that we read so far. You're like, man, that sounds good. I want to be in that. Mm -hmm. I want to be caught up. But you got to keep reading, brothers and sisters. You got to keep reading. There's one way to escape it. For some, that is. I got to keep uh, uh, putting that in there for some. But let's go uh, back to Revelation. Revelation 11th chapter. Revelation 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse number 1. Revelation 11 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and then the worship therein. Mm -hmm. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot, 40 in two months. Yeah, all these things is going to happen in just three and a half years. Not not seven like some have told you. It's only going to be three and a half years that they, they're going to be doing their thing. Verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred, and three score days. Okay, so the Lord is even going to send some, some, some witnesses now that, that, that's going to give this abomination and desolation a hard time. You're going to eventually kill them off if you keep reading it. He's going he to take care of them and kill them off. But before they go, they're going to they be giving them a hard time. Mm -hmm. You know, for 203 score days, clothed in sackcloth. And he's going to eventually kill them. The Lord is eventually going to revive them if you keep reading. But we'll skip down and pick it up at verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Okay, so now, after, after this three and a half year run with, with this abomination of desolation, now we, we reading about, about the Lord about to make an appearance. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Sixteen. I mean, uh, skip down to verse 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come. Why are the nations angry when the Lord is making his appearance? Mm -hmm. Why the whole, all the nations are angry with, uh, with this guy coming? Why? Because the, 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 this false prophet, this beast, have taught the people to be against God. We have read a few times he's going to blaspheme his name. He's going to speak excellent things against God. Everybody is going to be ready to fight. So they're going to be angry. They, 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 they walking around. You're going to see so many people on TV tomorrow praying and talking about how much they love the Lord. And they're going to be some of the same ones that might be standing up here angry when the Lord finally makes his, his coming. Mm -hmm. 
The nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that thou should do what? That they should be judged. That they should be judged, and go ahead. And that they sh and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, mm -hmm. the prophets, mm -hmm. and, to, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. See, they're going to ultimately be destroyed. They want to go up against the Lord and have the nerve to go up against him. Like he said, this beast, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna whoop him with our hand. Lord, they're just gonna just have to say there, stand there, and say the words. It's not gonna even be a fight. You know, he got the saints, he got the angels coming with him. He just gonna sit there and look, like I told him. Mm -hmm. I gave him warning. You know, for 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 thousands of years they had warning, but nobody, everybody wanted to look the other way. Everybody. Go right over to uh, Revelation 12 and 1, and go ahead. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Okay, so there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, which this is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. See, this guy drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready be, to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Well, this is talking about Jesus coming out of Israel. Mm -hmm. But verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. He was, he was to rule all nations with the rod of iron and what else? And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. See, he was caught up to God. He died and, was, and went to his throne next on the right hand of God. But go ahead, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score okay, days. Okay, so again, this woman, which is Israel, she fled into the wilderness. Again, it didn't say nobody walk. He said flee. I mean, she had to run and get there. She had to hurry up, and it was a time period for her to get there. Mm -hmm. The woman fled into the wilderness, where she have a place prepared of God, that she should... that. He, they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, which is basically three and a half years. You know, but the, th this place got to be prepared of, of God. There's nothing there right now. It's useless to go there right now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. That's you just like a, 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 a hot sun and some sand, you know. That's all that's there right now, but it do exist. You know, there is a place called the wilderness, several of them. You know, it, is, it exists, but again, there's it's no life there. There's nothing there. Just like it wasn't nothing there when, when, when the Lord led Israel out of Egypt. But he, he prepared it for them then. And it's going to be the same thing for this woman the second time around. Like one of my teachers, main uh, old quotes used to be, if you want to look at and know what the Lord is going to do tomorrow, you got to look at what he did yesterday. Because mm -hmm. he don't change. He does not change. But well, let's move on. Let's go to uh, Psalm 91. We finished that, right? No, you get uh, 13 through 17. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Skip down to verse 13 then. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which had brought forth the man child. Mm -hmm. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Okay, so till this woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place. So she was given a way to get there. You know, so that's something that we don't have to worry about. The Lord is going to prepare a way. You know, if he, if he can prepare the desert for people to live in, he could definitely prepare a way for you to get there. When it's time. Only when it's time. Until the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, time and half a time from the face of the serpent, which is three and a half years, 15. 
and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, mm -hmm. that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. He's saying he wants this woman bad. He want her. He want to kill this woman. Because once, once they know that he got Israel out the picture, the rest of the world is going to be with him in the lake of fire, if he can complete that task. But, uh, verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yeah, the dragon, he couldn't get to this woman in the wilderness, so he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Because again, there's going to be some of us left. You know, some, some of us got to be out here with some knowledge teaching the people. But they're going to really need it. And we really going to be doing a lot of praying and fasting because, again, without that, that mark of the beast in your forehead or right hand, your own parents, your own brother and sister going to give you up to the system. Mm -hmm. You know? They go, Mike over there, look at him. You know? He ain't got a mark. Look at Will. This, he, these are your own family members. Your own best friends you've been knowing 30, 40 years. You know? Yeah, he ain't going to take it. Y'all need to go talk to him. Mm -hmm. you, you, it, it ain't going to be pretty. That's why I bought the book describes it as a time that the world has never seen. Can't imagine it. We could try, but you, you, you can't imagine it. He said, the dragon was walked with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which do what? Keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They keep the commandments of God. Not this beast commandments or this false prophet commandments. You know, because he got his own set of rules for his believers. His believers will be in church listening to a bunch of lies come tomorrow. The Sabbath, they can care less. Everybody out wash, washing their cars, enjoying mm -hmm. the nice weather, barbecuing, doing all kind of stuff right now. Ain't got mm -hmm. time for the Sabbath. No, can't do that. We do everything else. Well, let's move. Let's go to now. Let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and pick it up at verse 1. Psalm 91 and verse 1. Go ahead when you get there. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. But once you make it to this wilderness, of course we're going to have to trust in God. You know, again, we're going to a place where there's nothing there, that, that, that there's nobody there. Nothing there. Everything that, that the Lord is going to prepare is going to be new, you know, to that, to, to that part of the world right now. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, mm -hmm. and from the noisome pestilence. Yeah, he can deliver you from a lot of things. But go ahead, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou thrust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, mm -hmm. nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth the noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it should not come nigh thee. You're going to see all kind of people going down. He said a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Because once the Lord got his wings around you, his hedges around you, there's, there's, there's no, nothing that can touch it. You know, again, we already saw in Revelation that, that, that Satan tried to go and touch this woman and he couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, the earth helped this woman, you know, flee. And he had to turn around and go find whatever other remnants he could find. Because, you know, again, he can't overpower God. You know, he can only, he's only limited to what, what he's allowed to. So if the Lord say, hey, these over here is untouched, Satan, he can't do nothing. He cannot pass that boundary. It's just that simple. But go ahead. Only with thine eyes shalt thou... Behold and see the reward of the wicked, mm -hmm. because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the Most High, 
thy habitation. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Okay, so again, he gave angels charge over Israel coming out of Egypt for, for a time. You know, and he told them, hey, your enemy is his enemy. As long as you be obedient and do what he say. And it's, it's gonna, he's going to send an angel to keep charge over those that make it in the wilderness as well. Mm -hmm. And then you ain't got nothing to worry about. You ain't got to doubt it. You know, you, you, all you got to do is get there if you were worthy to have a way to get there. You know, again, Satan can't supersede or overpower what the Lord have, have put forth. Not even an angel. You know, we got to keep in mind, one angel took, it, 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 you know, did, did so much to Satan in the third. You know, and some, and, some, and some of his angels. You know, so, you know, one angel can do a whole lot to protect you, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need an army. The Lord said you protect it, you protect it. That's right. You ain't got to worry about it. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. And we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Isaiah 43. And verse number 18, when you get there, brother, go ahead. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know of it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He said, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So the Lord can do this. We, we, we worship an awesome God. There's nothing our God cannot do, even to a wilderness. There's nothing there now, but we got to keep in mind, he created this world from nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything that we see came from nothing. So what's making a river out in the desert for the Lord? That, that's, that's, that's easy. All you got to do is get there. But go ahead. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. He said, hey, the beasts of the field shall honor me. They going to give the Lord honor. Being out in the dry desert and now all of a sudden they, they, they can uh, uh, get, get something out of a river, being in the middle of the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I, I give waters in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Go right over to, uh, back up to Isaiah 41. And we're going to pick it up at 17. Isaiah 41 and verse 17, when you get there. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. He said, when the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Verse 18. I will open rivers in high places, and fountains in the midst of the valleys. Mm -hmm. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. And the dry land springs of water. He said, hey, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make a, the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Again, only an awesome God could do that. Go ahead. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitter tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tr tree together. Nah, nah, he got waters in the, in the wilderness. Nah, he, 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 he can make trees grow in the wilderness. You know, again, not that kind of part of the world that these things could survive in right now. No trees over there right now. Sun burning up everything that's over there right now. You know, you couldn't survive long out there right now, but with rivers and trees and stuff like that, you're getting everything that you need. You know, you're getting some life out there. Things that you can survive off of. Verse 20. 
that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this, and the Holy One of Israel have called have created it. See, they that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this, and the Holy One of Israel have created it. You know, he he's the one that, that that's gonna get credit for this. Psalm seventy eight. Psalm 78, and we're going to pick it up at verse number 12. Psalm 78 and verse 12. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, mm -hmm. and he made the waters to stand as in heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with the light of a fire. Mm -hmm. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He's reminding you of what he did to the children of Israel beforehand. So it is, so we can understand and use that as a guide that the Lord can do it again. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. They walked around for 40 years with the same shoes on. So, I mean, the Lord can, can, can he's an awesome God and can provide us with what we need. Go ahead, verse uh, 16. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. See, he did all these wonderful things, but Israel, we just that type of people. We still want to be hard hit. Mm -hmm. It don't take us long to forget. To, it, it, it don't take us long to start remembering what exactly the Lord then did for us. So he said, they sin yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. And then what else? And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. I mean, they, wasn't, they, wasn't, they, 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 they started just forgetting and wanting more. You know, he made all this stuff. Where's the meat? You know, I want meat. I don't want no tree. But you, you, you got enough to survive off of. Mm -hmm. You know, but we just, they just used to what they was having. Go ahead. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Yeah, they started getting beside themselves. Go ahead. Behold, he smote the rock, and the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his they, people? They, they just want a full course meal. You know, can he do this? Can he get some meat? Can he get some a table, some bread? Israel, we something else. He just... We, we reading this as a reminder for the time when the time do come and some of us make it to the wilderness, we got to be thankful for what we do have. That's right. That's the bottom line, because I'm sorry. It's not going to be no Wi-Fi out in the wilderness. It's not going to be no 4G and, and all this other stuff that we used to. But, of course, Israel, being the people that we are, somebody going to want it. Mm. You know? Somebody's going to complain. He's just giving us a reminder. Hey, it's, it's going to be enough for us to survive. If they can survive 40 years under the circumstances, three and a half years shouldn't be that long for, for those of us to make it in this time around. Piece of cake. Go ahead. Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel, mm -hmm. because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Okay, skip down to verse 4 then. Go ahead. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? They provoked him a lot in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Go ahead. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Yeah, they remember. They, they, they forget. We, we, we'll forget in a minute. But again, brothers and sisters, that's why right now, while we have time, we need to prepare ourselves, prepare ourselves mentally so when this day comes, We'll be prepared for it. You know, we have to be prepared for it. Again, and step off in faith and go out in the wilderness and, you know, whatever the, our awesome God have prepared for us, that's what we got we to gotta accept. Bottom line. You know, again, it ain't going to be what you used to now, I'm sure. But, hey, you're going to be able to survive. And when the enemy out there looking for you and can't get to you, that, that should be enough. That should be rest assured enough. 
you know, that you're not back here like some of the other remnant that's having to deal with this guy and great tribulation. But let's move on. Let's go uh, back to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse number 29. Matthew 24 and 29. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. He said, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. after tribulation, you keep reading down a little further. We're not going to read that far, but that's when you're going to have two in a meal and one going to be gone and so forth and so on. After tribulation, not before. Mm -hmm. People get it twisted. You need to keep reading on when people, when the Lord started resurrecting the saints, you know, with the dead first and then taking some of the, the, the live saints with him, mm -hmm. you know. It's a, it's a time slot, but we after tribulation now when all that's going to start happening. But it says, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. That don't sound like the tribes going to be happy. They're going to be mourning. It's going to be a sad day and a surprising day for a lot of people. Because now they have to face the truth. Truth been there, but nobody wanted to accept it. Nobody wanted to pay attention to it. Everybody wanted to laugh and go on, just like the people did in Noah Day. They had time, they had a warning, but they just laughed, no other scorn. Man, you crazy. Mm -hmm. Go on head on with that boat. You know, we don't need no boat. You know, we got this and got that. And look at what happened to them. Mm -hmm. It's the same way that the Lord going to catch people off guard this time. And they're going to have, it's not going to even be off guard. The warning is here. It's just nobody don't want to pay attention and take it serious. Mm -hmm. It said, the signs, shall appeal the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, and after, afterwards he going to send the angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And again, this is all after Great Tribulation. Uh, Ezekiel 20. We're going to start wrapping it up. Ezekiel 20 and verse number 32. Ezekiel 20 and 32. Go ahead when you get there. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. Mm -hmm. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. He said, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And what else? And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. He's talking about gathering Israel. I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered, with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. Verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, mm -hmm. and there would I plead with you face to face. See, the Lord is going to bring, once he got to Israel, he's going to bring them to this wilderness. He said, I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, just like what? 
like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord Just God. Just like he pleaded with the forefathers in the wilderness in the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. He said, I will pass you to cause under the rod, the pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant and do what else? And I will purge out from among you the rebels. He said, the rebels, not gonna, they're going to be purged out from among you. There's going to be even some rebels out in the wilderness. When it's all said and done, he said, I will purge out from among you the rebels and what else? And them that transgress against he me. Said, hey, they're going to be purged out. This is why I'm making a separation there. Go ahead. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So everybody that, 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 that the Lord gather and has already entered the wilderness don't mean that they're going to make it to this kingdom. They're not going to make it to, to the land of Israel. Well, let's move on. Let's go over to uh, Isaiah 35. Isaiah 35. And we're going to pick it up at verse number one. Isaiah 35 and verse 1. When you get there, go ahead, brother. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. This is going to be a wonderful thing going on out there. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. He's going to come and save you. It said, but say to them that are a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. So you don't even have nothing to worry about. Verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Mm -hmm. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Yeah, that's going to be a wonderful thing going on out in the wilderness during this time. Verse 7. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Mm -hmm. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Okay, so this highway going to be there in the wilderness as well. And it shall, it says, and the highway shall be there, and the way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Why is that? The unclean shall not pass over it. It said the unclean shall not pass over it, but what? It shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Mm -hmm. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. Mm -hmm. it, it shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. The redeemed shall walk there on, the, on this highway. So, and the highway shall be there and the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up upon there, thereupon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Go ahead, verse 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and, si and sighing shall flee away. It says, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall, shall flee away. So again, we're talking about going home. This is the route we're going. 
got to be on that highway. So we want to be the clean ones because ain't nothing unclean going across this highway. That's they right. go over into the land. Again, like the choir was singing, Israel going home, this is the going home part right here, straight from the wilderness. That's the next move. So again, brothers and sisters, while we got time, we got to circumcise ourselves in the mind and get this thing right. We got time. We got we to gotta do it right right now. Because again, this thing is coming to pass. It ain't going to be tomorrow, next week, next year, even, if, even a couple years from now. But it is coming. It's, get, it's getting close. It's getting close. It, it, every piece of this puzzle, every player in this play is all coming together. Everything is, is, is coming together. Hosea 2, and this is it. Hosea 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Hosea 2 and 14. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. And that's in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so it said, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Still talking about this woman, you know, this Israel. You know, he's going to bring her into the wilderness. And I will give her her vineyards from thence in the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt, and what else? And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Baalai, for I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth, mm -hmm. and they shall no more be remembered by their name. Okay, so it said, in that day the Lord saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more ba Baalai, for I will take, the, take away the name of Baalim, out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. So all these false gods' names, you, you, they, they're going to be unremembered at this time. Verse uh, 18. And in that day will I make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. He said, in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fires of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safe. So again, the Lord is going to make a covenant between beast as man, beast and man, something that, that, that happened before, you know, where, where man won't be, beast won't be after man the way they are now. You know, beast right now, they want the blood of, of, of man. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. hey, that's their that's they nature. You know, but at this time, he's going to make a covenant with the beast of the field and the fowls of the air. But they won't be trying to attack us no more. You won't be running from lying no more. You know, it's all the scriptures that tell you that babies going to be able to play with dangerous snakes and, 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 and so forth and so on. You know, the wolf not going to want a lamb no more and all this stuff. This is all at this time. Verse 19. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. Mm -hmm. And I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Okay, skip down to verse 23, and this is it. And I will sow, in, and I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy, and I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Okay, that was the wilderness, the place of safety during tribulation. I hope someone got some understanding in Jesus' name. <laughs> now we, uh, we have some announcements.
Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick up your DVDs or CDs at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other Bible study classes, question and answer Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via the conference call line. Children's Bible class ages 4 through 12 every Saturday at 12, every Sabbath at 12 noon. Teen form Bible class ages 13 through 19 every other Sabbath at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and or speak with Brother Wayne. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing, such as cleavage should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head covering, and women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or a scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young, if your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to... to to the TV monitoring area in the rear of the class. Any tithes and or free will offerings should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Okay, I don't have anything else. If nothing else, we can go ahead and stand and face the rules on the close out. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And the Lord of Lords. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
searched high and I've searched long for a love to call my own.